We as humans like to build things. We build furniture, we build houses, we build machines, we build families, we build portfolios, we build companies, we build empires. And the Earth is not enough. Just this past week, humans landed another rover on Mars. Someday soon, maybe we can build there, too. Here in America, where I call home, this building of our personal empires and accumulation of the stuff that goes along with it has caused the average household size to increase to almost 2,000 square feet, second only to Australia. And even that is not enough to hold all of our stuff. America has a staggering 52,000 self-storage facilities, each with dozens to hundreds of individual storage units. When is enough enough? When will we be content? When does the building stop? In the fall of 1964, in northeastern Pennsylvania, a small fruit containing the seed about a quarter inch long in length dropped to the ground from a black cherry tree. In the subsequent years, it took root, growing slowly in the canopy of the larger trees. But it persevered. And finally, in the early 80s, when the land it stood on was logged, the loggers took the larger trees, but left this one to flourish. And flourish it did. The light it had so sparingly received under the larger trees' canopies was now given in abundance. It went from an afterthought in the undergrowth to one of the largest trees in its little tract of woods. But history has a way of repeating itself. And in 2005, at the ripe age of 46, this cherry fell unwillingly to another logger. Up to this point, this tree, not too dissimilar to we as humans, had the singular goal of increasing. Increasing in size, consuming resources. But on that summer day in 2005, the trajectory of its life changed. As soon as the chainsaw cut through its trunk, the life-giving sap that allowed for its growth was cut off. And from that point forward, its life was about becoming less, not about becoming more. As it lay on the ground, its leaves were still releasing moisture into the air. Later that day, even its leaves were taken from it as the logger limbed the tree, leaving only the trunk, some 44 foot in length. That was cut in half and dragged by a skitter to the timber landing where each of those pieces was cut in half again. Three of those four logs left that landing and headed to a large sawmill some 30 miles away, but one of them was not deemed worthy because of the damage from hitting the ground when it was felled. It was this log that made its way to my father-in-law's small antique circular sawmill where it lost its bark, was cut into boards, and placed into the rafters of his barn to dry. It lost even more of itself over the next 10 years as the moisture content of the wood went from 100% down to 12. Several of those boards made the 61 mile trek to my workshop sometime around 2015 where they were cut up and mostly used to build a bench. But not all of it. One piece, six inches wide, 20 inches long, and two inches thick was left over and placed into my short spin where it remained until today. When I went looking for a chunk of wood to make a spoon for my wife. In the following hours, more of its substance was removed through planing, sawing, and sanding until all that was left from that towering 80-foot tree was a simple wooden spoon. As we blindly forge towards the stated and unstated goals of personal empire building, far too few of us are filled with thoughts of what we can give away, how we could, through having less, be able to live more generously towards others. I think that most, or at least many of us, would say that if we were millionaires, that then we would have enough to be generous in our giving towards others. The problem is, then it is too late. By then our muscles of generosity have atrophied to the point of being permanently disabled. Our sole focus is the concept of gaining more, not contentment with less. Giving of ourselves is not something we can do tomorrow if we are not first willing to learn how to do it today. When our lives are spent in the pursuit of building, doing, and gaining for ourselves, we are living out the principle of more is more. And that it is. Having more stuff also means having more maintenance. Having more stuff 
also means having more worries. And having more stuff also means having more storage, or shall I say, more baggage. It often comes with more prestige, but that prestige is not really the person's. It belongs to the empire of stuff and accomplishments. Often it comes with more influence, but again, the influence is usually not with the person, but with their possessions. And so it goes that when people lose their wealth and possessions, they often lose their prestige and influence at the same time. There is another way though. It is to leave behind the principle of more is more and to instead adopt the mindset of the modernist designers and architects, the mindset of less is more. It is to understand that by paring away from our lives the mindset of pursuit and accumulation and instead replacing it with the attitudes and actions of generosity towards others, we actually are not less of a person, but more. Our influence is not less, but more. So how does someone make the paradigm change from one of accumulation to that of generosity? From the mindset of having more to the mindset of having less is more. Each person's journey is unique, but there is a consistent thread that weaves itself through all of these stories. It is the characteristic of contentment. The ability to say, what I have is enough. People who were able to say, I have enough, have enough to be happy. People who are able to say, I have enough, have enough to share. People who are able to say, I have enough, have enough time to stop and give themselves to the others around them. But this journey back to a place of possessing less and having more, where contentment is a consistent and persistent mindset, is not something that we can start tomorrow. It is something that we must choose for today. Through all of this, we can learn the lesson that a certain towering black cherry tree learned. That sometimes, it is only when everything that is unnecessary is stripped away from our lives that our hidden treasures are revealed to the world around us. Mm -hmm.